So um, when you compare different drugs, one way the different drugs in treating chronic pain have been compared is a number called NNT. This is number needed to treat. That is, how many patients do you have to treat with a given drug to get as one patient who gets 50% or better relief with that drug? And as you can see, most of the drugs that we use for the treatment of chronic pain have NNT somewhere between two to five. What does this say? This number looks small, so it should be good. But what it says is that we need to treat somewhere between three to five patients to get one patient who gets at least a 50% response. So more than two thirds of our patients don't get adequate response with the drugs that we have in hand. In addition, a lot of these drugs have significant side effects. This is called the number needed to, treat, number needed to harm. So in case of opioids, they're fairly effective. They're fairly low compared in terms of the NNT. That means they are effective in a good proportion of patients, but they're also low in terms of their number needed to harm. That means one in every six patients we treat with opioids will have some side effects that limit their usefulness in those patients. Nausea, constipation, etc. So side effects are the limiting factor. It says, I now pronounce your husband and wife. Side effects may include headaches, weight gain, irritability, mild depression, and tantrums. So, uh, so what we are limited by with some of these drugs are side effects of these drugs. So what are the side effects? So some of the side effects are CNS effects. We heard about issues related to somnolence or dizziness, uh, cognitive uh, dysfunction, uh, inability to drive, uh, abuse, addiction, and other adverse effects. But the most common uh, side effects that majority of our patients will complain are gastrointestinal side effects, such as constipation, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. So we've been interested in saying, how can we come up with a strategy that we can potentially use some of the beneficial effects of opioids, but maybe minimize some of the adverse effects with the use of opioids? So one of the other uh, observations that have been made is that uh, with the increasing understanding that opioids can be used chronically in treating patients with cancer as well as non-cancer patients, that over the last decade, there have been a dramatic increase in the use of opioids in this country. And this is just shows that between 97 to 2006, there's a three to five fold increase in the prescription of opioids for treating patients. So one could argue that this is appropriate, that now as physicians, we're doing a better job of treating these patients with chronic pain states. But we do have a societal problem, and that's a problem with, uh, uh, with uh, abuse of certain drugs. Uh, and and our, some of our patients come and say, my dog chewed my pills. Uh, and so there is an increasing use of prescription opioids in the community. And, and one of the alarming facts is that increase is occurring particularly the young age groups, the teenagers and the young adults. So uh, while we are seeing uh, more of our chronic pain patients being treated appropriately, the uh, DEA is saying there is an alarming epidemic of prescription opioid abuse, particularly in young adults and teenagers. Okay. So this has uh, led us, uh, uh, you know, this is where I've had to go back from being a clinician back to the bench and say, how can we come up with some strategies to use this class of drug but decrease the side effects associated with this class of drugs? Can we do something about it? Can we balance the beneficial effects of opioids with the adverse effects? And so we thought one strategy, as we heard from the morning from uh, Matthias's presentation, Dr. Rinkamps, and as well as Mike, that pain originates in the periphery. Maybe an appropriate target we should be is trying to go where the pain originates and target the periphery and enhance the body's pain control mechanism. We will We've learned again in the morning about these descending modulatory systems that allow the body to control pain, 
And so we want to see if we can enhance this body's pain control mechanisms. We also uh, heard today that opioids work at different sites. And particularly, the traditional thought is that opioids work in the central nervous system in the brain and multiple sites in the brain stem. And in the last decade, we've also learned that one important site of modulation with the opioid at the level of the spinal cord, where the uh, signals from the periphery are modulated at the level of the spinal cord. Uh, in contrast, drugs such as aspirin or non steroids anti-inflammatory anti agents are traditionally thought to work in the periphery, where the you know, site of injury is. However, some recent evidence uh, from our lab has suggested that there may be a peripheral site of action of opioids as well, that opioids may work in the periphery in addition to their central effects. So we know that there are receptors. This is a section of the spinal cord and the superficial layers of the spinal cord. There are these opioid receptors. These are staying for opioid receptors. And we know that these receptors actually come from the dorsal root ganglia. And then they are, uh, they then are transported towards the spinal cord, towards the central nervous system. And they're transported towards the periphery as well, where these nociceptors reside near the skin. And using a drug called loperamide, which is a, an opioid agonist which predominantly is restricted to the peripheral nervous system. It doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier and therefore doesn't cross the central nervous system. You could show that in rats, if we administer uh, in a model of neuropathic pain, these are rats with nerve injury, that show exaggerated pain behavior, hyperalgesia. So their fall withdrawal thresholds are low here after the nerve injury. But we could give this peripherally acting opioid and we could see that we could reverse their pain behavior, whether to mechanical stimuli or to thermal stimuli. In thermal stimuli, you know, we can see that from here, this is after the injury, the threshold is lowered, and we can reverse this with this peripherally acting opioid, suggesting that there are some opioid receptors in the periphery that may also have some potential analgesic effects. And we also observed that after a nerve injury, um, receptors in the dorsal root ganglion and the uh, spinal cord are reduced. So this is just to show that here in the dorsal root ganglion, at an, at a, within a week to two weeks, compared to control animals, the amount of opioid receptors <coughs> are markedly reduced. So a nerve injury can reduce opioid receptors, and, and hence it's possible that uh, you know, after a nerve injury, there's less response to these opioids that we give exogenously. 